Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So, I'm going to give y'all the rundown, basically. So, I was going to film Bracketology at some point this week, but it kind of slipped off my mind. I was a little bit busy. And so, I was going to film Bracketology today. But, tomorrow is going to have such a good slate of college basketball games. The games tomorrow are nuts. There's so many good games. So many good games. I mean, it's ridiculous how many good games there are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to film a preview of those games in this video. I'm going to be previewing all of those really good games. Probably some streams tomorrow and then Bracketology Sunday. So I can update it based on what happens on these games. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get my hands on two IU Purdue tickets. I'm trying. Um, I, I don't have unlimited money. So, like, I can't just go out and buy two for, like, $900. Um, there are students selling them for, like, 100 about. I'm trying to get my hands on two of them because I don't want to go by myself. Um, so, I'm, I'm trying. Hopefully, I can get my hands on two tickets so I can get a vlog from that game. No guarantees, though. If I can't, I'll probably just stream the game. Um, but... We'll, we'll figure it out when, when we get there. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out when we get there. But let's preview these games. Um, I'll minimize myself real quick. And, uh, and let's see what we got here. We will save this game for last. We'll, this will be the last game we preview. Virginia, Virginia Tech. This is going to be a pretty good game. Virginia, very good defensive team, obviously. Virginia Tech, they're... Hanging on for a tournament spot for dear life. 13-9 and is not a terrible record, but a 3-8 and eight conference record is pretty bad. Um, they are clinging to hopes of a, of a tournament bid. And I think if they want that tournament bid, this is a must-win game. Um, against their most hated rival at home. Uh, I expect a good game in this one. On ESPN2, should be a sold-out rivalry type setting. And it's going to be hype. I really don't know who's going to win this one. Virginia's obviously the way better team, but that's a gargantuan advantage for Virginia Tech that it's at home. Virginia Tech is a one-point favorite according to the pick center. Virginia, I don't know. I mean, yeah, they woof, They really were going through it in conference pullouts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a row. Then they did beat Duke and Syracuse close to Miami. They've picked it up a little bit. I'm going to take Virginia Tech. I got faith in them that they're going to pull it off when they need to rivalry game. They're going to come to play. I'm taking it up. I guess kind of an upset if they're a one-point favorite. Not really, but I'm going to take Virginia Tech. Kansas, Iowa State. Here's here, Wow, spread is even on this game. Holy cow. Here's my thing with Iowa State. Every year, I've said this a lot. I'm sure you're tired of hearing it, but every year... I have no idea whether or not Ohio Iowa State's a good team or not. I have no idea. Um, like, they'll go out and they'll beat a number one North Carolina, and then they'll get trashed by Iowa or trash or lose to Texas Tech and Missouri. Like, I don't know. They had a stretch that they were playing really well, beat Baylor, TCU, almost beat Kansas on the road. It's, I don't know, it's one of those things where they, they're, they're kind of a Jekyll and Hyde team. You don't know which, which team's going to show up. But look at this. Look at this. 11 and 0 at home. That's got to be worth some. That's got to be worth some. Here's the thing though. Kansas, I feel like is a team that's going to get better when they play you a second time because they're very well coached in Bill Self. First game they played, Kansas kind of did not play that well, but they were able to squeak out a 2-point win at home. I think they're going to be better prepared for this game even though it's on the road. I'm going to take Kansas in this game. I think Kansas is definitely the better team. You don't know what Iowa State team is going to show up. UConn and Georgetown. I'm going to just, we're going to look at Georgetown really quick because this team is absolutely abysmal. Um, they're just abysmal. I mean, you can't, 1-11 in conference play. I think they were even winless in conference play last year. I mean, you're Georgetown. You're coached by Patrick Ewing. How are they this bad of a team? I have no idea. Um Got trashed by Loyola Marymount. I mean, Gonzaga lost. It was about like two points. They got blown the hell out. Um, yeah, conference play has been rough. They did beat DePaul, though, so good for them. 
Um, but yeah, Georgetown. I remember when they used to be good, man. They were like a the first year I ever made a bracket, 2013. I had Georgetown on my Final Four. They were a two seed, and they lost to. That really was the game that killed Georgetown. Was that Florida Gulf Coast game? They haven't been relevant since that game. UConn big. Baylor, Texas Tech. Texas Tech won their first conference game uh, the other day against Iowa State at home. Uh, good for them, but I think Baylor's going to win this one. LJ Cryer, Adam Flagler, Keontae George. Really good team. Going to be a dangerous team compared to my time, Baylor. Um, Auburn and Tennessee. Now, Auburn was a team that I was really kind of skeptical of because I hadn't really beaten that very many good. Like, of these teams, who do we think? Who, what do we think? Okay, what do y'all think's the best win? Okay, Ar I think Arkansas probably the best win, but before then, Northwestern maybe? I don't, I don't know. And they've, they've lost two games to A&M and West Virginia. They got to play at Tennessee. I think Tennessee should be able to handle this one, although Tennessee did disappoint me. Uh, they're the team that I've been saying should be ranked number one ahead of Purdue, but I can't because Purdue's 21-1, and one, and until they lose a game, I remember, remember, remember. Well, they went out and they got embarrassed on the road at Florida. Um, I wouldn't really hold this game over a Tennessee fan's head because Florida is in the Virginia Tech boat where they're really going to need to start improving their play and winning some important games down the stretch to, to make the tournament. And they were losing in this game. They were down 44-38, came back and won it. That's a team playing on desperation mode. And on the road, that's going to be a really hard game to win. So good win for Florida. I would not really be worried about that at all if I was a Tennessee fan. They got a home matchup against a ranked opponent. I think they're going to come out. And, and win. I'm going to take Tennessee. Butler and Mark had... Butler is a losing, Rick. Butler is another one of those teams where they haven't really been relevant in a minute. Um, yeah, I see no good wins. Four in a row, loss. I think Marquette's going to win. Marquette's a really good team. I, earlier in the year, Purdue barely, uh, Purdue barely beat Marquette. And I was like, aha! Purdue is not that good. They can only barely beat Marquette. Well, then Marquette like, comes out and wins a ton of games. Like, oh, maybe Marquette's not that bad of a team. And uh, they are not. Marquette, Marquette, Marquette's a damn good team. Uh, they have the, uh, On Ken Palm, they actually have the number one offense in college basketball. Um, you'll see some very impressive points scored numbers here um, if you look. Um, but their defense is not that great, but it's serviceable enough. Um, Marquette, if they get hot, they, they, they can really get hot. TCU. And Oklahoma State, again, Oklahoma State in that Virginia Tech and Florida boat where they're teetering on the edge of tournament hopes, and they're going to need to get some wins down the stretch if they want to do that. 13-9, um, and 9-2 nine. Nine and at home. That's looking good against a TCU team who struggled on the road, only 3-3. Three and three. Um, They've only played, wait, dang, they've played, okay, they've played 22 games and only six on the road. That's, that's kind of weird. Um, for a team that's only played six games on the road, I don't, I don't know. Oklahoma State, I don't know. TCU is also in the Iowa State boat where I don't know if, I have no idea whether they're good or not. Because they'll go out and they'll blow out Kansas by 23 and then they'll lose to Mississippi State. So I don't really know. I like the home advantage Oklahoma State would have. I'm going to take the Cowboys to get uh, a tough win here. Uh, what else we have? Miami and Clemson. I really, I, I'm not high on Clemson. I'm sorry. Um, I've been ragging on Clemson all year, especially after this loss to Boston College. It's just an inexcusable loss. Um, they needed a buzzer beater, like miracle three to beat a not very good Florida State team, a 7-15 and Florida State team. I'm sorry. I I think Clemson will make the tournament just because they're 18 and five. They have an impressive record, and they do have one win over Duke. But man, if they're if they're given like a six or a seven or a five seed, take the upset. Clemson not a very good team. I'm definitely taking Miami, who has been my under the radar team pretty much all year. They really don't have any. Okay, at Georgia Tech's kind of a bad loss, but other than that, they really haven't lost to a bad team at all. Um, I think they're gonna come out. I think they're gonna beat Clemson on the road, even though it's on the road. I'm still going to take Miami. I think Miami is better. Alabama at LSU. Yeah, this is probably going to be Bama big. LSU, I mean, 1-8 and eight in conference play. Wasn't there a situation? I was, it was either this offseason or last 
where every single one of LSU's players either went to the draft or transferred except for one, and they had, like, one player on their team. Was that this? Is that why they're so bad now? Is that why they lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Nine in a row. Oh, my God. So they started the year tw- – so they started the year 12 and 1. 12 and 1, and they lost nine in a row. And these games aren't even close. Okay, at Kentucky, three points. Oh, and then Maul at AM. Maul at home against Florida. Lost by four. Yeah. What the hell is going on to LS Who? My God. That is embarrassing. Texas, Kansas State. Top 10 matchup here. Ooh, the matchup predictor is giving a slight edge to Texas. <sighs> okay. If you ask me, I think Texas is the more talented team. More talented team. But Kansas State, when I watch them play, they just play with this energy that I just love to see. And they have Keontae Johnson, who can just take over the game whenever he needs to. He did that against Kansas. Uh, the first time they played Kansas. They lost the second time they played Kansas. It's going to be at home, too, and that's such a big advantage. And teams, crowds will show out when they play Texas. People hate Texas. I'm taking Kansas State. I think they're going to win this one at home. They're a solid team. FAU and Charlotte. FAU actually lost to UAB. Um, UAB is who I had winning that conference in the preseason. There could be a chance that both UAB and FAU get tournament bids, that is a possibility. Because, okay, 21-2, and two, I would still have Florida Atlantic in my tournament. I mean, it's hard to be 21-2. and two. Um, But UAB is 16-6. and six. Actually, UAB had been playing as well as I thought they had been. They're, they, I don't know. Yeah, UAB was really highly touted in the preseason. They didn't really live up to expectations, but they did just beat a ranked FAU. So I don't really know what to think about that. I still think FAU will be fine. I will say though, if you're one of the, if you're a fan of a team that's teetering on the edge of the tournament, you better hope UAB doesn't win the Conference USA tournament because if they win the Conference USA tournament, then they're gonna get in, and FAU would probably also get in. Um, so something to watch out for. I do think they will beat Charlotte. Xavier will beat St. John's. St. John's is the team I had on my bubble to start the year. They are off the bubble. I do not think they will make the tournament. UCLA, Washington State. Washington State has had like kind of an weird year. They lost by 11 to Prairie View A&M. Um, and then they went out and beat Arizona at Arizona. Like, they, they've just been having a wacky season. Like, they lost to Colorado, but then they went out and beat Arizona. It's weak, bro. They're having such a weird year. Um, I mean, not going to make the tournament. I mean, uh, who knows? Maybe maybe they'll just maybe they'll just run through the back 12 tournament. Maybe they will make the tournament. Who knows? Um, UCLA on the road. I would take UCLA if I was a betting man. Oregon State, Arizona, definitely Arizona. Oregon State really made the Elite Eight two years ago and then just fell off the face of the earth. Holy cow. That's that's crazy. Um, yeah, um, I would definitely take uh, Arizona. Gonzaga, th- okay, I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a good game. This right here, this is going to be a good game. Th- wow. Wow. Um, I, this game starts at nightcap, starts at 10.30. I'm going to be excited to watch this one. Gonzaga St. Mary's, 20-4 and four versus 19-4. and four. This is going to be one hell of a game. Um, pretty much, so Gonzaga's been running the West Coast Conference for, for years now, but the one team that's kind of had their number and has beaten them, has, has, got, has gotten their fair share of wins against them is St. Mary's. Um, St. Mary's historically has done pretty well against Gonzaga. You know what St. Mary's is going to bring to the table. They're going to bring that good defense, that team play, that ball movement, that slow pace of play. They will not lose the game. They're not going to make very many mistakes. You're going to have to go out there and beat them. Um, and this game's at home, and that's that's going to be that's a huge advantage for St. Mary's. Um, Gonzaga, obviously, supremely talented like they normally are, but they haven't been looking that strong this year. Um, they... They did lose a conference game at home to Loyola Marymount, a team they haven't lost to since 1991. But, I mean, they've rebounded. They beat Pacific, Portland, and Santa Clara. This is going to be a really rough game, though. And also, if St. Mary's wins, that would pretty much secure them. That would pretty much secure them the conference, the regular season title. 
St. Mary's hadn't really lost. They had this rough three-game stretch where they lost to New Mexico, good team. Houston, when they were number one, really good team. Colorado State's kind of concerning. But since then, they've been all business. Um, they haven't lost, and they haven't even really had a close game. Only real close game at BYU. It's hard as hell to play at BYU. They have crazy fans. If I was a betting man, money line pick, I like St. Mary's. I like St. Mary's. Um, the fans are going to show out for this game. Probably one of the one of, if not the biggest home games in school history. Um, I I I'm taking St. Mary's. They're they're a really solid team. Don't mess with them. I. Uh, you tried to mess up with them in the tournament last year, and uh, it didn't work out too well. I do have one gripe here. I only looked at ranked games. We need to look at one unranked game that uh, really has made me upset, and that is Duke, North Carolina. Why the hell is game day going to this game? Someone please explain that to me. It makes no sense. I get it. It's the best rivalry in college basketball normally. Not this year because they're both kind of below average this year. I mean, be- below their standards. I mean, there's there's still two good teams, but Duke fans and UNC fans will both tell you that they're not living up to, to their standards this year. So why are they going to this game? It's not even like it's Roy Williams versus Coach K anymore. It's Hubert Davis against whoever the hell is coaching for Duke. I, I get it. The, the students camp out for weeks and stuff. It's, it's, it's a huge game. The tickets are about the same as IU Purdue, which I think tells you something. But you, okay, IU Purdue is the best game of the week. It's the best game of the week. Um, but if you don't want to go to IU Purdue, go to Gonzaga St. Mary's. That would that's a great game. Like the it should the game day should have gone to either IU Purdue or Gonzaga St. Mary's or even Kansas State Texas if you really want. Because those are the best games. I'm upset that they did that. And my friends like when they could have middle schoolers out there playing and they would so that's stupid. Stop completely dick riding UNC and Duke. It's annoying as hell. It's annoying as hell. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. As for who I think is going to win, uh, I think UNC is a better team. I'm going to take UNC. Okay, now to, the, now to the game that matters. Now to the game that matters. Purdue and Indiana. Okay, so both these teams coming into this game really hot. Purdue obviously has just been earth-shattering teams this year for, for no reason at all. Um, only game they lost is to Rutgers, and I'm starting to give them a little bit more slack because Rutgers is, like, actually really good. Um, Rutgers, they play this really good defense. I mean, it's crazy how good a defense Rutgers plays, and they'll get their fair share of points. I hate Rutgers. I can't stand them. I do have tickets to the IU Rutgers game, which I will be going to. Um, but, but, yeah, it's... It's crazy, man. They've won, and since then, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a row. They have, I mean, they're, you know who they're led by. You know who they're led by. You, you've heard his name thrown throughout the land. Um, the beanstalk himself. I, okay, I've, hate, I've, I've, I've done my fair share of Zach Eady hating. He, he's a great player. He's a really good player. I mean, yeah, he's seven four, and remember, he'd be working every down if he wasn't seven four. But okay, he's he's a great player. He's a really great player. I mean, he's gonna be a problem. He's a, he's a problem for every team, and he's gonna be a problem for for IU to handle. He's a terrific player. Here's where I think IU has an advantage, though. They have their their whole team design is Zach Eady and four role players who do their role really well. Um. Mason Gillis, he's their spot up three point shooter. He's gonna make him if he if he's open. Um, usually. Um, Fletcher Lawyer is a good passer. Um, I mean they have freshmen that are just they play really well and they're well and they're well coached. I will give Purdue their credit. IU, on the other hand, IU season's been very up and down. They started the year hot as hell, winning their first seven and beat UNC back when everyone thought UNC was the best team in the country. And they lost at Rutgers. Okay. And they got kind of embarrassed at these two games. And had Xavier Johnson hurt. So then they struggled through these two games. And then Race Thompson gets hurt in the Iowa game. And they blow a 21-point lead. And then they get embarrassed by two very mediocre and not-so-good teams in Northwestern and Penn State. And everyone's like, oh, season's over. They're going to the NIT. And then they rattle off five of the... Mo- okay, discounting the Minnesota game... 
Four, four of these wins are some of the best basketball I've seen IU play. Not even some of the best basketball I've seen IU play. Some of the best basketball I've seen any team play. They just they just ran through teams in in that portion of the year. They looked like they looked like a true contender. I saw a stat from from like from when Xavier Johnson got hurt to the Penn State game. For in this stretch. They were the 97th best team in the country by efficiency. Throughout these five games, they were the third best team in the country by efficiency. And then they lost to Maryland. Now, I'm not too concerned about this loss. I'm disappointed that they looked ahead to Purdue, but I can't get mad at them for it because you have the game of the century, basically, at the end of the week, and you got to go on the road to play a tough team. Maryland's a tough team. 12-1 and at home. You you don't go. You're not 12 and one at home by being a bad team. And they just they just, they just didn't shoot very well. I mean, Jalen Hood Shafino was abysmal. I mean, he was abysmal. I mean, one there. I saw something. There were scouts of like 10 NBA teams at this game, and Jalen Hood Shafino played the worst game of his college career. I mean, he went off against Ohio State for like 30. He was one for fourteen from the field. He was horrible, and no one else really picked him up either. Um, so yeah, here's what I'll say about this game. It is a the advantage that IU gets from being at home can't even be quantified. That's how good they are at home. Just kind of the Northwestern game because most students were on break during that, and like no one was at that game. Discounting the Northwestern game, they're they're earth shatteringly good at home. But but Purdue Purdue Purdue's a tall task, man. They're a tall task, and they're gonna get fired up for this game. They're gonna get fired up, and they're not they're not gonna come in and get rolled. It's it's not gonna happen. If you think IU's just gonna run the floor because they're at home, like they did to Michigan State and Ohio State and Wisconsin, it's not gonna happen. It's, it's just not going to happen. Purdue's not gonna, Purdue won't let that happen. It is going to be a grinded-out style of game. I do not think this will be very high scoring. TJD and Zach Eady are going to match up. They're going to match up. They're going to go possession for possession. I don't think either player will get much advantage on the other. Look at these stats. 22 points per game, 19 points per game. I think that's what we'll probably see. TJD will get about 20. Eady will get about 20. It's going to come down to whose supporting cast can play better. And I think I think IU has more talented players than Purdue. But Purdue, they, they play really well together. They just have this chemistry that you watch them play, and it's like, wow, these guys know what they're doing. I will, what you're going to need, what either one of these teams are going to need, is one player... To do way better than expected. That is how you win these types of games. Is you have one player that plays over their head. And players play over their head at home. And I think IU is going to get that player. And I think that that player will be Tamar Bates. Tamar Bates, I saw, is shooting like 50% from three at home. 25% from three on the road. I think that he's going to be the expert. I think he is going to knock down all the big shots he needs to. IU wins it. 63-66. 63-66. You heard it here first. That is my pick. Um, if you don't like it, sorry. I'm doing my damnedest to try to find uh, to find tickets to that game. Um, I'll see if I can do it. Um, I'm trying. Um, I, I could go by myself, but I really don't want to go by myself. Um, I'll see. I'll see what I can do. If I go by myself, I go by myself. If I don't, I don't. It, it, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I will get you some sort of reaction to this game while the game's going on, whether I'm at Assembly Hall or at a watch party or whatever that may be. But I love y'all. I will see you tomorrow for a great day of college basketball.